Hi everyone, John Pokerchip Friedberg here with another episode of Stacking Chips, your strategy source for the 2007 World Series of Poker, the Bellagio Cup, and the dozens of other events going on right here in lovely Las Vegas. Today's Monday. Today is the $2,500 No Limit shorthanded event. It's a six-handed uh, No Limit tournament. Should be a lot of fun. And uh, yesterday was a $3,000 No Limit event. I, I almost made the dinner break last night. But uh, I didn't quite get there. I lasted about five and a half hours when I, I played a jack-queen against aces. Ended up losing the hand, although I lost the very bare minimum because the guy who had the aces played the hand terribly. And uh, then I went on to uh, lose with an ace-queen on an all-in pot against an ace-king. So I think so far in the World Series this year, I've now played in about 11 events. I've cashed in one of them. But uh, I'm still up about seventy-five thousand on the World Series, so I'm, you know, I mean, I just went oh for my last eight in uh, as far as cashing, not having any caches, but uh, I certainly can't complain. I'm having a very profitable World Series so far. Hopefully, though, things will start to turn around and I'll start to run a little better and and start making the money. So my guest today is a World Poker Tour champion. He took down the uh, sorry the Borgata. Was it the Winter Poker Open? I think. Yes, it was. And uh, he plays online by the name of New Hizzle. His name is Mark Newhouse, and Mark will be joining us in a minute. But first, I want to get to a couple of email questions. And again, I really appreciate you guys sending the questions in. Please keep them coming to stackingchips at cardplayer.com. All right, so the first question comes from Dominic. Dominic says, I'm coming to Vegas to play in my first World Series event. I was wondering if you had any thoughts about pre-registering for some of the larger field events. I heard that you would still be waiting in line for the same amount of time as those that didn't pre-register, but I'm really more concerned with being an alternate player, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, he's wondering if it makes sense to pre-register. And, you know, there was a... The, the first couple of events at the Rio were terrible. I mean, the, the people who pre-registered got screwed, a lot of them. They had, some of them were alternates. There were lines, like, all the way around the halls. The computer systems were down. It really sucked. But, uh, you know, since then, I'd say since about the second or third day of the World Series... Everything's going really smoothly now. The Rio, um, they've gotten everything together. And um, I usually buy into my events the day before. So I don't know if they have lines in the morning because I usually don't get there until around 12 or 12.15. But it seems like everything's going really smooth. So I'd say for the most part, I wouldn't worry too much about pre-registering. Maybe just get there, you know, an hour early or get there the day before and register. And um, you should be fine. The next question comes from Steven. Stephen says, I just wanted to say you have the best show on Card Player TV. Thank you, Stephen. I'm glad, let's see, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you get to run episodes regularly during the World Series. I had a question about Chinese. A lot of the pros talk about playing Chinese during their off time. What is it? Is it a style of poker or game or something completely different? Well, Chinese, when people refer to Chinese, they're talking about a game called Chinese Poker. It's, a, uh, it's an interesting game. Every, there's four players that play, and well, up to four players, and each player gets 13 cards. And of those 13 cards, you make three hands. You make your highest... You, typically, you would play your highest hand on bottom, which is a five-card hand, then your second highest hand in the middle, which is also a five-card hand, and then your third highest, or your lowest hand on top, which is a three-card hand. So, for example, the, the perfect hand in Chinese poker, of course, if you're playing high only, would be like a royal flush on bottom and a royal flush in the middle or straight flush or something. I guess then you couldn't have three aces on top, but let's say a royal flush on the bottom, a straight flush to the king in the middle, and then ace, ace, ace on top. Now, I'm not, I'm not a huge Chinese player. I do play sometimes, usually when I'm on airplanes or something. It seems to be a good way to pass the time, but uh, it's, it's an interesting game. It's a lot of fun. And, um, you know, basically you, you can, you play by the point. So you keep track of the points in the game where, depending on if your hands, if, you know, two of your three hands beat your opponent's hands, then, you know, you accumulate points for that. If all three of your hands win, you accumulate points for that. Then you also play with bonuses where if you make four of a kind or if you make a full house in the middle, different, you know, there's different sorts of ways of scoring the game. But for the, for the most part, it's a it's a thirteen card game where you play a five card hand, a five card hand, and a three card hand, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun and it is a form of poker, but uh, not really one that you could have tournaments with because it's it's more of a player against player 
or up to a four-player game, and that's really about it. So thanks again, guys, for sending in the questions. Again, keep them coming to stackingchips at cardplayer.com. All right, well, let's, uh, let's bring on New Hizzle since he's here in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Newhouse. Mark, thanks for coming to the show, man. Yeah. Glad to have you here. No problem. So we got New Hizzle in the house. Tell us about uh, how your World, World Series is going so far. Uh, well, it's going okay. Uh, I cashed in the uh, rebuy event. So the far. 1K yeah, no the 1K limit rebuy? rebuy. Uh, got 18th place for 18000 Nice. So not too bad. And were you in for less than 18000 Uh Yeah, I was in for seven. Good. So made some money there. Um, I'm playing a bunch of events this year. That's all I've done so far. Uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's event, the Six Max. That that's always fun. Yeah, um, this twenty-five hundred dollars short-handed event, which is actually today, <laughs> or today, <laughs> or tomorrow. Event. Yeah, but whatever. Either way. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. <laughs> I'm planning that event. That should be a good one. Yeah, for sure. So you're most well known for your win, your WPT win at Borgata. Yeah. Tell us about what it was like, what that was like for you. Was that your first major cash? And um, I cashed in uh, one of the World Series events last year. I made the final table of a limit event, um, but that was my first uh, 10K World Poker Tour that I played. Oh, your first event? Yeah, and um, your first. Yeah, I played seven the, figure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So uh, I actually I wasn't even really planning on playing that one. Uh, I never really played tournaments. I. Uh, Mainly a limit cash game player, and two and four hundred game broke. Decided to go play a satellite, and just went from there. So, were you playing big stakes already before you won the? Uh, how uh, much did you win in that tournament? I won one point five in the tournament. Okay, so um, were you already playing pretty big stakes? Yeah, I was already playing. Uh, at that point, I had played uh, eight and sixteen hundred limit uh, during last year's World Series. It was the biggest game I played, and I played uh, like. Two four and three six online pretty regularly and four eight live. Wow, those are pretty big games. Yeah. Did you uh, did you change that up at all after winning a million and a half? Um, I uh, I'm still playing the same games. I played like one in two thousand a few times. Uh, try not to play that too much because that's a really big game. But. So you were telling me just yesterday that you prefer limit cash games but no limit tournaments. Yeah, that's right. Why is that? Um, I find no limit cash games to be really boring. Actually, they're just really slow. Um, I don't like full ring anything. Uh, I prefer shorthanded whatever I'm playing. But shorthanded limit is there's a lot of action in the game and it's just a lot of fun. Um, it's a really swingy game. Um, no limit cash games are actually a lot less swingy. But uh, I guess that's what makes it fun. Um, and I think there's a lot more post flop play in limit. Than right. There is in uh, no limit. I like that too. Definitely. So, what about why then do you prefer no limit tournaments as opposed to limit tournaments? Um, I like no limit tournaments mainly because in limit tournaments you really just have to like run hot. Um, you know, it, the same reason I like limit cash games is the swings. Um, the the swings that make them fun is what makes it bad for tournaments because. You know, you don't have that many chips, and if you run bad for a little while, you're out. Whereas in a no limit tournament, you don't necessarily have to make hands. Um, it's a lot easier to, to accumulate chips. Right. Not every hand goes to showdown, um, and it's just better structure for tournaments anyway. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think um, <coughs> I like playing limit cash games myself, but yeah. I, I think for me, it's probably a little more the fact that I, I don't like risking so much money. I mean, I'm happy to play big stakes limit, not as big as you, but you yeah. know, one two hundred, I'm comfortable with. But playing, you know, in a, a twenty five fifty no limit game, where you can, you know, easily lose ten, twenty plus thousand dollars in a single hand, I, I don't really have the yeah, stomach that, for that. Yeah, that myself. can be pretty sick. Uh, yeah, the the one hand that can break you is always uh, that's one um, thing about no limit that can turn some players away, I guess. Yeah, but, for sure. So speaking, you, you said you like the swings and it's more fun for you. You're, you're, you're well known amongst us poker players and in the circuit as being a, like a, a prop better. You like prop bets. Yeah. So tell us about some of the crazier prop bets that you have going or that you have done in the past. Um, I just recently lost a bet with uh, Gary Wise. Um, he used to work for World Poker Tour. I don't know who he's working for now. But um, where he was supposed to lose 20 pounds by the beginning of the World Series, I'm supposed to quit smoking. 
Uh, he lost 34 pounds, and I did not quit smoking. So now I have to blog for his site uh, every day for a month. And what, what, where is that blog at? Uh, it's at wisehandpoker.com. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I've I got four days up so far. I haven't done it yet today, so I'll probably go do that when I leave here. And wasn't there was another bet about with Gary and French fries or something? Yeah, wasn't there in the Bahamas. Uh, it actually this bet started because uh, Court from uh, Pocket Fives, I paid him two hundred dollars to uh, eat a piece of like <laughs> conch salad that Cat had, and uh, he ate that. And then Gary said something like, "Will you pay me to eat this French fry?" And then I said, "Well, I'll pay you not to eat that French fry." And it went from there. Where uh, I actually ended up paying him like three or four hundred dollars uh, to hold ten French fries in his hand and go to a club for the whole night, <laughs> <laughs> and he did it. Yeah, and he did it, and I ended up paying him. Uh, <laughs> some other crazy—I don't know if this is a prop bet, but I lost like eighty thousand dollars in the Bahamas playing shuffleboard. Really? Yeah. So that was—that's a lot of money. No fun. Um, that was over the course of two days. Okay, so yeah. 40000 a day, that's not a bad average, <laughs> yeah. I guess. We started playing small, playing 20 a point, and got stuck like 1000 and just went from there. Yeah. <laughs> double up, double up, yeah, double up. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Typical amongst us guys. Yeah. So let's see, uh, let's get back on poker track a little bit. So tomorrow, or yeah, today's the uh, 2500 No Limit shorthanded event. Yeah. Um, what, what, are you playing in the 50K horse event? I will not be playing that. No? Um, I... I'm absolutely clueless in Omaha and studs, so that's not worth uh, fifty thousand for me. Anyway. I think I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, so, what is there one event that you're looking forward to the most besides, of course, the main event? Um, I like all the six max events. Um, I'll definitely be looking forward to those. I wish they had a six max limit event actually, because I'd like that a lot better. Uh, I don't really like limit tournaments, but shorthanded limit is my game that I play. So yeah. I'm looking. But I'm looking forward to the six max events. Those should be fun. Uh, the one non Hold'em event I'm playing, I'm playing the triple draw, Deuce Seven triple draw event. That should be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm, yeah. that's a fun game. I love play, I like I like playing that game small stakes online. But I yeah. I don't think I would buy into a World Series event. <laughs> but um, I'm you know I don't know too much about that game. Yeah, it's not a hard game to at least know to basically. Yeah, play. it seems like they have everything this year except for a shorthanded no limit or sorry shorthanded limit yeah. Hold'em. It, so it, per it absolutely makes sense that next year, hopefully, though they will have that. Because Be nice, yeah. I actually I'm, I enjoy shorthanded limit cash games myself, as do you. And you know, shorthanded games are basically like taking over. I mean, yeah. if you look on the internet now, it used to be all these games where you know the nine-handed full ring games, and now like all the popular games are the six max games. Yeah, any game above like fifty, hundred online, you can't find in uh, in a full ring game anyway. Right, it's it's everything six and max. I actually. I, I can barely even play six max anymore. I play so much heads up that it, that's getting too boring for me anyway. But yeah. And uh, in, in another episode, I in one of our previous episodes of Tacking Chips, I forgot who I was speaking to, but we were talking about how the value of hands increases so much when you go from a full ring yeah. game down to say you know three four handed. You know, any ace suddenly becomes ace king. Yeah. And any pair suddenly is like, you know, queens or whatever. Actually, a good way to, uh, really, you can play it the same as your full ring game, but just pretend like the first four people folded. Yeah. So, you know, like if you're on the button three handed, it's this, it's pretty much similar to if everyone folds to you on the button in a full game. Mm -hmm. uh, although the game's going to probably play a little bit differently, but uh, as far as your opening range and everything. So when let's let's talk about that a little bit. So yeah. when you're playing in a shorthanded game, um, do you find that you have a much wider range of hands as far as defending your blinds? Do you have a particular blind strategy well, when you're in a shorthanded game? When uh, in a shorthanded game, I'm going to defend my blinds definitely a lot more than I would in a full game. But if everyone folds to a late position opener, um, I'm going to be defending my blinds about the same as I would in a shorthanded game. Uh, but I'm very, very loose in my blinds in uh, Limit Hold'em anyway. Okay. Um, I, I'm i probably too loose in full games just because I get bored in full games. Um, but I play a lot of like heads up, three, four handed. and You're playing a lot of hands. And especially in the blinds, you're playing pretty much anything in those games. Yeah. 
All right. Well, again, uh, tomorrow or t- <laughs> today is the 2500 <laughs> shorthanded no yeah. limit event. You and I will both be playing in that. So yeah. best of luck to you. Yeah, you too. Thanks again for coming on the show. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, that's it today for our episode of Stacking Chips. Make sure to tune in tomorrow and every day throughout the World Series for more strategy talk, interviews, discussions, and more right here on Card Player TV. And keep those emails coming in to stackingchips at cardplayer.com. From John Poker Trip Friedberg and Mark Newhouse, we're out of here. Good luck, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. 